From what's going to happen soon to things you never thought you knew about it, join me as we reveal some of the mysterious secrets of Area 51. Number 9. Yes, people are really planning to raid it. Ah, the power of the internet. All it takes is a funny video or a fun idea or something so crazy it just might be true to come across the interwebs. And all of a sudden, it's the biggest thing since sliced bread. And such was the case when a man made a Facebook event called Storm Area 51. And you know what? People really got behind it. And by people, I mean 2 million people offered to join the event in order to find out what was really going on at Area 51. It was really a perfect storm of events, if you think it. Because for many decades, Area 51 has been one of the biggest mysteries on the planet, despite explanations being given about what it is, what it isn't, and more. To that end, the idea of finally finding the truth was obviously appealing to a lot of people, since the government, like usual, wasn't going to give them the answers they deserved. Why not take back the power and find out themselves what's going on? For some time, the idea of Raid Area 51 or Storm Area 51 hit the internets and continued to spread. Even if you didn't know about the Facebook event, you'll likely have seen various hashtags about Area 51 coming out and trending worldwide. Even certain internet channels like Rooster Teeth came out and made a parody of what it would be like to Raid Area 51. It's hilarious, look it up. To their credit, they even set a date of the weekend of September 20th to do the event. Now, being the party poopers that they are, Facebook went and took down the event because it's not aligned with their community guidelines. However, one of the guys who helped make the event is continuing on in a rather unique way. Mainly, he's opening a music festival that weekend called Alien Fest in a small town next to Area 51 and inviting people to come. Scam? Not so much. The event is free, and though musical guests haven't been announced yet, it seems to be very legitimate, and even CNET and CVS are promoting the event. Now, whether the actual raid of Area 51 will come is a bit up in the air, there's no doubt that there are people stupid enough to try and raid a military base. But whether 2 million people actually show up to try to do it is definitely uncertain. But it'd be a heck of a show seeing them try and raid it, but more than likely they won't. So let's move on to other secrets of Area 51, shall we? And no, I'm not a government agent, just wanted to say that. Number 8. Why is it called Area 51? If you say the name Area 51 to just about anyone who's been on Earth for a little bit of time, especially in the United States, they'll know what it is immediately. It's the place where aliens are, or something like that will be said. But if you ask them why the place is called Area 51, I bet you they wouldn't know the reason. I mean, it sounds official and definitely something that the military would name a special base under their control. But why Area 51? Well, ironically enough, all you need to do to figure out the truth is go back into the history logs of Nevada around the 1950s. You see, given the rather barren nature of Nevada as a state, the government took some of the state for themselves in regards to having a massive test site, and they chopped it up into various sections that they labeled areas 1 to 50, and then eventually Area 51. This particular area, as known to the world who look it up, is a small area about 65 miles north of Las Vegas. And over the years, the military has been using it for all sorts of tests. Probably the most famous non-alien use was the testing of nuclear devices back in the 50s and 60s. Again, the barren area made it perfect for testing as there were no distinct human settlements in the area at the time. This might raise an eyebrow for you, mainly because you thought that Area 51 was solely a base to contain aliens, right? Well, number 7. Before the Aliens Here's the thing. While it's true that for decades Area 51 has been associated with various alien conspiracies and information withholding, that doesn't mean it was born to house the aliens. As noted, they did nuclear tests in the 50s and beyond. What's more, it was also in use technically before the first major alien incident ever occurred. During the early 1940s, when World War II was going on, there were modified runways at Groom Lake, which is next to the base, that was used as an auxiliary airfield for the United States Air Force. Then in the 1950s, the CIA, in a rare moment of transparency, started up their U-2 spy plane program, 
There, they use the open areas of Area 51 to do tests on all sorts of aircraft. The location, which was very inland within America and thus could reduce prying eyes, was perfect for the tests and the area was marked off so people couldn't sneak in. Nor would they likely do that because of how the topography of Nevada. But even at this point in time, Area 51 was still pretty much just an area with a few bases. It wasn't until the 1960s that more established structures were made. And by this point in time, Roswell had already been happened and somewhat died down. Officially, the next few decades saw Area 51 being used for both domestic and foreign airplane testing. They captured a Soviet Union plane during the Cold War and brought it to Area 51 to see how some of its technology worked. It honestly wasn't until the 1980s that things really got started with Area 51 is holding aliens. And even then, it's not like it was the most reliable start to the rumors. Number 6. Roswell The concept of alien life has never been a recent thing not even with the scope of the 1900s. If you look through your history, you'll notice that there are stories, paintings, and more that depict potential alien life being spotted, including a famous painting where the maker depicted flying saucers in the exact shapes of what we picture them now, hovering over a city. But for most, the idea of aliens among us started because of an event in Roswell, New Mexico. This all truly started when a farmer found wreckage of a craft that he didn't recognize. After doing the right thing and calling it in, the government arrived, took the wrecked craft, and then released a report about it. Funnily enough, that was where the problem started. For the report didn't have a lot of logic in it, and people noticed, because even back then, they weren't exactly trusting of the government. The official story was that the craft that crashed on the farm was a weather balloon of some kind that malfunctioned and crashed, but people didn't buy it. So the people started to wonder if it was an alien craft. Ironically, a few weeks before Roswell, a pilot in Washington claimed to have seen alien craft during a patrol flight. With this incident, it just magnified the belief in aliens. After that, apparently, government types arrived in Roswell and tried to dissuade people from talking about it. These became the infamous Men in Black, which launched many stories and a movie franchise about what the government was trying to do to keep their secrets in check. People wanted answers, and though Area 51 was mentioned, it wasn't a full-blown thing at the time, especially since people technically didn't know it existed. So what was the tipping point of the alien conspiracy? Number 5. Robert Lazar This is a tale of two stories both of which feature a man named Robert Lazar. Lazar came forward in the 1980s and told a Las Vegas television station that he had worked at a place that was right next to Area 51. What was his job? Reverse engineering flying saucers. Needless to say, because this was on a news station, it was a pretty big deal, and the somewhat dormant Aliens Among Us feeling got amplified to an almost absurd degree, especially since at this time, Area 51 was still not acknowledged by the government due to them still doing secret airplane tests and research in the area. However, there's a twist here. Mainly, Lazard turned out to be a fraud. He fabricated his work history, school history, and pretty much everything he did in his adult life to get a resume that would make people believe him. Why did he do it? It's hard to say, but even with him being proven false, it didn't stop the feelings that the government were hiding something. The 80s were a rough time for the government, and now they were getting attacked in the court of public appeal because of something as out there as aliens on top of everything else. And yet that's still not the reason that Area 51 was confirmed to be real. What did it? A health scare, actually. Number 4. Environmental Scandal So remember when I said that Area 51 was home to former nuclear tests before it was Area 51? Well, it's more than likely that such nuclear tests and composition of nuclear weapons and such were continuing long after those tests in the 50s were done. This was all but proven in 1994 when a lawsuit came against the United States government as a whole. A set of contractors and widows of ones already lost came forward to claim that at Groom Lake, they were exposed to incredibly harmful chemicals that injured, killed, or gave diseases to the workers present. Now, unlike Lazar, these people weren't pulling a bluff. They even had Rutgers University perform tests on them to show that they were exposed and hurt by various chemicals, which by their own accounts, they didn't know what they were. Unknown chemicals in a military base? Yep, that's sketchy. Sure enough, 
The tests proved that they were exposed to high levels of things like dioxin, dibenzofran, and trichloroethylene, which if you're curious, can be deadly. Here's where it gets really interesting though. Despite having clear evidence that things weren't right at the site of Area 51, the government invoked numerous laws to try and protect themselves from exposure, even citing that revealing what was at the site could have national security implications. While some judges denied that claim, the President of the United States at the time, Bill Clinton, invoked a presidential power in order to ensure that the site remained unimpeded by investigators. This caused the case to fail and it's one that keeps getting brought up and dismissed because of these government rules. Number 3. The Moon Landing Didn't expect us to go there, huh? Well, what's one good conspiracy theory about a place without another to make it even more absurd? In the 1960s, the United States was challenged by the late President John F. Kennedy to go to the moon to prove the power of not only the country but humanity. Unfortunately for them, the Soviet Union was also in the space race and was a bit ahead of them in regards to sending people into space, yet the moon was still out there to be claimed. Eventually, on July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made it to the moon. Or did they? That is one of the most popular conspiracy theories of all time. Despite much evidence saying they did, there are those who feel that the whole thing was shot on a set. But there's a problem with that theory. You need a place where no one other than official personnel will be and will be signed to secrecy, such as a base in Nevada that no one knows about. Remember, in 1961, Area 51 wasn't known to the public, so the idea of a moon landing being faked in a studio in a CIA Air Force base, very plausible. Granted, it didn't happen like that, but it hasn't stopped people from believing it. Number two. What are they really hiding? Here's the thing that is sometimes lost on people. With the acknowledgement of the base in the 1990s, the world at large knows that Area 51 exists. There have even been unintentional pictures of the base taken via Google Earth and drones that have been confiscated by the government to further show that it's real and being kept a secret despite being exposed. Now, logic would tell you that whatever is at that base was compromised because of the lawsuit. After all, should someone actually break in, it would cause problems, as unlikely as that would be obviously. So that would make them want to go and take everything to another base or area, right? Well, maybe not, because with all the secrecy, with all the political powers and whatnot that are going to great lengths to protect everything, you have to wonder what is so valuable that they're doing everything in their power to keep it secret. Could it be aliens? Sure. It could also be a weapons development facility. It could be a secret base for the government to utilize in the events of the next world war or nuclear event. Remember, it was built during the nuclear age. There are many theories, but the truth all ties back to a singular thing. Mainly, Area 51 is hiding something. Number 1. The truth is out there. Hopefully. So where does that leave us? Will we ever truly find out the secrets of Area 51? Eventually? More than likely. It probably won't come because of a raid drone by internet users out there, but more than likely someone is going to learn the truth. And when that truth comes out, it may change things. But that begs the question, what if Area 51 is a MacGuffin? You know, a fake-out, to hide something even more sinister or more secretive, or maybe a scandal that the US government doesn't want exposed. We all know we've had those in the past and went to equal lengths to try and cover those up. So why not here? In truth, we don't know, but we will know one day, and let's hope we're ready for when that truth, whatever it is, comes out. Thanks for watching, everyone. What did you think of the history and secrets of Area 51? Do you think we'll ever find out the truth about the place? What truth do you think lies in there? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and watch our science videos on the playlist.